Hello GMAT aspirants, welcome back to yet another episode of GMAT Friday with IMS International. Today we are going to be doing a quantitative reasoning question that would involve mathematics but doesn't involve mathematics. It's a very very logical question. So here's the question in front of you. Pause the video, give it a shot and then resume to look at the solution. Alright, so this is an amazing question that involves a lot of logic. Let's try and understand the question first. Let's break it down as to what the paper setter wants us to do and then we'll ta tackle the question. So there are two people R and S. They play the following game with n sticks on a table, meaning there can be any number of sticks on the table. Uh, they have denoted by that the, uh, with the letter N. Now each must remove one, two, three, four or five sticks at a time on alternate turns. Okay, so this is a game where to and fro interactions would be having. Firstly, I would be picking some number of sticks, then you would be picking some number of sticks and so on. So there's going to be alternate transactions happening between these two people R and S. And no stick that is removed is put back on the table. Makes sense. Once you have removed the stick, you are not going to replace that on the table. The one who removes the last stick or sticks from the table would win the game. Okay, so whoever picks the last stick or maybe there are multiple sticks left and whoever picks them last is going to win the game. Now, if Rita goes first, which of the following is a value of n such that Sam can always win no matter how Rita plays? So, this is something that we'll keep on hold for a minute. Firstly, let's try and understand what is this game about. So, let's say there was just one stick on the table. And let's say this game is being played between me and you. And it is your turn to pick sticks, right? So, what will you do if there is only one stick remaining on the table? You are going to pick that and win the game because whoever picks the last stick or sticks wins the game, right? So if there was just one stick on the table and it was your turn to play, you are going to pick that stick. What if there were two sticks? Are you going to win the game? Yes. Even if there were three sticks, four sticks or five sticks, you are going to win the game in all of these five cases. Why is that? Because you have the liberty of picking any number from one to five. So if there are five sticks, you will pick all the five of them and win the game, right? Let's talk about a case where you have six sticks. Now, are you going to win this game? It is your turn to play. Are you going to win this game? The answer is no. No matter what you do, I will always come up with a counter. And folks, one very important thing that you need to understand in this question is that both R and S are playing to win the game. I mean, they are going to be using their entire logic to win the game. If they do not win, they do not win. But they are not going to be making any logical errors. Otherwise, any of these five options could be the answer to your question. Both of them are logically very smart and would be applying all the cunning that they have to win the game. And if they can't win, they can't win, right? So let's say if you have st six sticks and it is your turn to play, what can you do? You can either pick one stick. What will I do in that case? I mean, if you play and uh, pick one stick and pass on the chance to me, I will be seeing that there are five sticks in front of me and I can pick any number from one to five and therefore I will pick all the remaining five sticks and win the game. But what if you had chosen two sticks? I would have gone ahead and picked four sticks. Similarly, if you had taken three, I would have taken three and won the game. If you had taken four, I would have taken two. If you had taken five, I would have taken one and won the game in all of these five cases. So the point is, if six sticks were remaining on the table, no matter what you do, assuming this was your chance to play. So if there were six sticks remaining and it was your chance to play, no matter what you do, I will always have a counter and end up winning the game. So. As a player, what would you not want to have six sticks in front of you because the opponent will be smart enough to, uh, to pick the remaining sticks and win the game. All right. So if there were six sticks on the table, that would be a win-win situation for the opponent and not the player whose chance it is to play. Okay. 
So six is something that won't work in our favor if it is our chance to play. Now let's imagine there were seven sticks and it is your turn to play. Can you win the game? Yes, you can. How? Because you would be picking just one stick and pass on the chance to me. Now it is my turn to play and I can see that there are six sticks in front of me. Now, no matter what I do, you would be using that logic and picking up the remaining number of sticks to win the game. So seven would be a very, very favorable number for me if it is my turn to play. Okay. What if there were eight sticks and it is your turn to play? What would you do in this case? Are you going to win for sure? Yes, because in this case you will pick two sticks and you don't have to worry whether I can pick two sticks or not because we can pick any number from one to five in a single go, right? So if you have eight and it is your turn to play, you will pick two and put me back in this position of choosing sticks from remaining six sticks. If you had nine, you will pick three. If you had 10, you will pick four. If you had 11, you will pick five. And always in all of these cases, you will put me in this position of choosing from six sticks. But if you have 12 sticks, you cannot put me in that position of having six sticks. Why is that? Because you can pick a maximum of five, right? So if you pick five, there will be seven sticks left. And if there were seven sticks left, I will pick one and put you in that position of choosing from six sticks and therefore 12 won't be a favorable case for you if it is your chance to play because no matter what you do, the opponent is going to be smart enough to put you in that position of choosing from six sticks, right? Now, I hope that you can see a, a, a pattern that is being formed. Let's say there were 13 sticks and it is your chance to play. Can you win this game? Yes. What will you do? You will pick one, put me in this position of choosing from 12 sticks. Then whatever I do, you will be smart enough to put me in that position of choosing from six sticks and therefore end up winning the game. So therefore, as a player, what is not going to be favorable for me if there are six sticks or 12 sticks and I hope now you are able to identify the pattern 18 sticks, 24 sticks and so on. So any multiple of six is never ever going to be favorable for me if it is my chance to play because what the opponent is going to do is going to put me in a position where I have to choose from the lesser multiple of six and that process will keep on repeating till there are only six sticks remaining on the table. Right. So what we are looking for is the number must be a multiple of six because let's now read the question. If R goes first, which of the following is a value of N such that Sam, the opponent, can always win no matter how R plays. Right. So it is R's chance to play. And now no matter what R does, the opponent will always win. That is only possible when Rita is presented directly with a multiple of six. If there are six sticks, uh, Sam will be smart enough to understand how many sticks to pick. Whatever is remaining, Sam would be picking that. If there are 12 sticks, Sam would play in such a manner that Rita now has to choose from six sticks, right? And therefore, I am looking for a multiple of six. I am pretty sure there has to be one of the uh, one of the options has to be a multiple of six. So this can be eliminated. This can be eliminated. This can be eliminated and this can be eliminated. Option D becomes the correct answer for this question, right? So you have to understand the pattern because the numbers were very small and you could have gone for trial and error. But what if these numbers were big? You couldn't have gone for trial and error. And that is why it is very important to understand what kind of pattern is being formed in such questions, right? I hope you were able to understand this question. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more such amazing content.